Hello, my name is Jake Long, and I am here today with Ann Kaler, who is representing Food for Kids Cape Cod. Food for Kids Cape Cod is a nonprofit organization whose goal is to bring together local communities and the Church of the Holy Spirit to provide free meals and free books for children and teens on the Lower and Outer Cape during the summer months when school is no longer in session. I think what it really is, is a, it's to help encourage a community effort to solve an issue. Uh, that most people don't even know about on the Cape, uh, to bring in uh, those with means, those without means, and all the various service organizations, education organizations, to make sure that the kids who have been in school all year have a lot of the same support through the summer. Yeah, we want to keep them going, keep them learning, Absolutely. keep them fed, right? Absolutely. Um, so how has your involvement with Food for Kids impacted you personally? Well, I was in a church... Um, before I retired to Cape Cod and we had a child care center and I appreciated the ability for a community again to support families uh, and to really not distinguish between those with means and those without and to be able to bring groups together without any kind of stigmatizing and so I was really struck by this church's effort uh, to do something very similar with kids through food in the summertime. I um, did not have any knowledge about that kind of program, the summer food service program, um, but was able to, to see how it really met a community need and did a lot for families without stigmatizing those who don't have versus those who do. Right, and I'm sure that those kids will have a long lasting benefits for the rest of their life from this. Hope so, that's the, Hope so. That's the plan. That's the goal. Um, so a lot of this organization is, it works because of the number of volunteers that you have. Right. Um, can you explain a little bit of the volunteering process to us? Sure. We rely on more than 100 volunteers every summer, mm -hmm. uh, and they provide uh, three different roles for us. Um, a group will come in early in the morning and help prepare the meals, primarily the lunch. Another group will come in and help assemble those meals. We have two assembly lines going. Uh, assemble those meals into lunch bags and those lunch bags into coolers. Uh, and then we have another whole group of volunteers that drive those right. to the 12 different sites that we have from mm -hmm. Harwich all the way to Provincetown. Yeah. Uh, and so it's, it's a lot of people. Some of them do multiple jobs. And it involves not only uh, full-time residents of the Cape, but seasonal members mm -hmm. uh, of the Cape, and even some people who are only here for a couple of weeks, okay. uh, and they'll stop in and yeah. help out. Uh, and they're critical to our operation. We have a very small staff, and without the volunteers, it wouldn't happen. Yeah, it's a three-pronged attack. It's it very is. nice. Gets it the is. job done. Now, who directs them? Who is the head of this organization? Well, there are, there are a couple of different layers in there. Uh, I'm one of the co-directors. Brenda Ridgeway is another co-director with me. And we have a steering committee in there. Our job is to provide sort of planning and oversight during the summer, but during the actual program, the nine weeks that we're actually in operation, uh, it's Anne Marie Mullen, who's a paid staff member for the summer. She's our operations manager, and she knows how to buy food, how to plan menus, how to coordinate all these volunteers and others uh, to get the food done and meet, uh, meet any kind of standards and safety rules, and she is our real go-to person in the summer. And then Laura Frischner is another paid staff member, uh, and she's the person who does all the coordination with the 12 locations. Uh, she also buys a lot of the non-food items for us and, and is our interface with the Department of Education that runs the Summer Food Service yeah. Program. So most of your funding comes from the Department of Education? They fund, and that's, that they are the funnel for the USDA Summer Food Service Program. Mm -hmm. Uh, and their funding uh, supports about between 60 and maybe 65 percent of, uh, of our operation compared to a lot of organizations that do the summer food service program are actually pretty inefficient mm -hmm. <laughs> because we're trying to cover a really broad geography uh, and, and have multiple sites, some of them small, some of them big. Uh, so we rely on uh, the state has some grants that we use. Project Bread is a big one. The Department of Education also has one. Yeah. We rely on CAPE uh, foundations like United Way, CAPE COD, Vela Foundation, uh, CAPE and Islands. Uh, and we also rely on, on the communities, the banks, CAPE COD 5, Siemens Bank, faith-based organizations like our church and Federated Church, um, and individuals. Um, and 
each of the towns that we provide, each of the eight towns, provides us with a human services grant. Wow. Ooh, a lot of funding. So, Love yeah, we write 19 grants wow, every 19 year. 19 grants. 19 grants, and they all come through. Yes. Because they all get it. Yeah, these kids need help. They do. Does. They do. So I saw that in 2022, Food for Kids donated more than 36,000 free meals. That must have been just absolutely amazing for these kids. Um, what do you expect to see in 2023? The same amount, more? Uh, I think we're going to see more. Right now, we're, we're making about a little more than 650 lunches a day, mm -hmm. which is higher than last year. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that's evolving is our community recreation, summer recreation programs. They're seeing increased enrollment in their programs. We're also seeing higher need because of the economics that are happening. And, and a lot of the COVID relief money that families were receiving stopped uh, in May. And so they're, you know, they're hurting. Inflation hasn't stopped. So uh, higher demand. So I think it's going to be a bit higher. That's good and bad, but, you know. Tough to meet. <laughs> tough to meet. It's good to have these services in place to exactly. help people in need. How do you think that food insecurity, how does it impact these kids? Like if they didn't have this resource to provide food for them during the summer, what would they do? Um, there's a lot of studies out there and a lot of organizations that look into this. And, uh, and what we're um, reading about and learning about is it, it affects their ability to learn. It affects um, their overall health. Uh, contrary to what many people can think, it can actually cause obesity uh, and learning loss. Um, and I think it can, it can influence the, the infrastructure of a family because mm -hmm. if you're struggling for food, uh, imagine what you're like on a day when, when you've skipped lunch or maybe skipped breakfast and lunch. Mm -hmm. um, your mood gets sour, yeah. you're short-tempered, uh, and it's not only happening with the kids, it's probably happening with the adults that are overseeing them. Uh, it just ends up being uh, an unfortunate yeah. uh, and unnecessary situation. Now, do you see these volunteers that we were talking about early, do they come back often? They do. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned before, we have some volunteers who only volunteer a couple of days when they happen to be here on the Cape. Mm -hmm. We have other volunteers who will volunteer uh, one day, the same day every week. Uh, others that'll volunteer two, three days every week. And I would say about 50% uh, of the volunteers have been with us for several years running. And then other people rotate, mm -hmm. rotate in. So it's a very flexible schedule. It is. Yeah. It is. We get some young people who are looking for some good um, outreach right. uh, lines on their resume mm -hmm. when they're going off to college, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and you know, and they tend to be <laughs> incredible hard workers. I'm sure they did. When are. they come. Yeah. Um, so do you have any concluding thoughts? Have we touched on everything that you'd like? To talk about? I think it's important for people to understand um, that the need is real, mm -hmm. um, that uh, the kids can lose so much in the summertime, uh, and especially with the stop of a lot of the COVID aid, uh, and it's still up in the air as to what the state's going to do about providing free school meals for all. Mm -hmm. um, but regardless of whether they do that, it still doesn't guarantee free meals for kids in the summertime. Right. So this is an ongoing issue. Uh, if people want to volunteer, uh, we can always use volunteers. If people want to help us improve our overall efficiency and, um, and technological savvy, yeah. I think that's probably where we could be a much better organization right. uh, is, you know, look, you look around at Family uh, Pantry, for instance, and mm -hmm. some of the high skill uh, things that are going on there. Mm -hmm. um, it would it would be good if some people wanted to get involved with us who have that kind of, of right. savvy the communication and business savvy mm -hmm. to help us take that next too. Ne next step. Yeah. Um, next steps. There's always yeah. room to improve. Right? There's a room to be much more efficient and right. better at what we do. And I'm sure there's people on the Cape who would be very willing to help you get there. I'm sure they would. Um, and to reach out to Food for Kids, you can go to Food for Kids. CapeCod.org. Um, there is a volunteer option on that website. Um, if you would like to get in contact otherwise, you can find them on Facebook as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that wraps up our show. My name is Jake Long. This is Ann Kaler for, with Food for Kids. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you. Mm -hmm.